Welcome back everyone. My name is Eric and in today's video we're going to be making the classic Italian finocchione salami. This is a fennel salami so if you like fennel this recipe is right up your alley. You're going to love the flavors that come from this salami and it's going to be better than anything you can buy at the store. I guarantee it. It goes great with cheese, wine, or by itself, let me show you how to make it. I'm gonna start by preparing Mold 600. This is Penicillium Nalgiavenzi. It's a protective mold that's gonna grow on the outside of my salami. It's totally optional, but you gotta know that if you're gonna make salami, mold will grow on it. So by applying this particular mold, I'm gonna limit the bad mold that could potentially grow on the outside of the salami, and you'll see what that looks like later. I'm gonna let that rehydrate covered on my counter overnight. The meat that I'm gonna be using is lean pork and back fat. So I've got 70% pork, 30% back fat, and it's already chilled. It's been in the freezer for about 45 minutes. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and grind it. For this finocchione, I'm gonna be grinding it on a coarse plate. That's 10 millimeters one time. Our meat's gonna go back in the freezer and it's time to get our starter culture prepared. A salami is a fermented sausage, which means we're gonna allow this sausage to ferment for a designated period of time. This starter culture, flavor of Italy, is adding beneficial lactic acid producing bacteria, which is gonna help ferment our salami. And the process of fermentation is one of the safety hurdles that we must achieve in order to have a safe consumable product. So once we mix it with distilled water, we're just gonna set it to the side and let it rehydrate for 30 minutes. And that's it. Our meat is now rechilled. So now I'm back at 30 degrees and we're gonna go ahead and add some of our unique ingredients. One of them is fennel pollen, quite possibly one of my favorite ingredients in salami making. We're also gonna be adding fennel seed, a little dextrose to feed the starter culture. We're obviously gonna be adding the starter culture. We've got Instacure number two, and we've got a little Sambuca to seal the deal. You can find a link to the full recipe as well as the backstory to this incredible salami in the description box below. You wanna make sure that the meat stays really cold while you mix it. And this is gonna be a little painful on the hands, but it's gonna ensure that the fat doesn't melt and that's what you're looking for. So now that our meat is nice and sticky, very tacky, we're gonna pop this into our sausage stuffer and go ahead and stuff it into our casings. I'm a huge fan of these synthetic casings for salami because you can really pack it in there nice and tight, which is gonna help the texture of the salami. So once I prick out any air pockets. I'm going to go ahead and brush it with that mold solution I prepared yesterday, and then we're going to weigh it. Now, the reason we weigh it is because we want to know when our salami is done. I typically try to target a 35 to 40 percent weight loss, 40 percent if I like a more firm, hard salami, and the little bit of mince that's left inside of the stuffing horn, we're going to go ahead and just put that in some cellophane because that's what we're going to use to test our pH. Now, at this point, we're pretty much done with the first step. All that needs to happen is this salami right here, which smells amazing, needs to ferment. Flavor of Italy ferments really fast. So for this salami to ferment, it needs to be in an environment that's between 75 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit with a relatively high humidity, 80 to 90%. So I'm just gonna stick this in my oven with a little bit of water in that tray. It's now the next day, and I'm gonna take that little packet. Now notice the color of the meat inside that packet. You could visibly see that it went from kind of a dull gray to a bright pink, and that's exactly what we're looking for. It's also firmed up quite a bit. If I press on it, it no longer feels like ground meat, but it feels like more of a, a sausage mass. I'm using an Apera Instruments pH meter to test the pH, and with this starter culture, I'm targeting 4.9. But anything between 4.9 and 5.2 is good, and as soon as you hit your pH, you can transfer that to the drying chamber. Your drying chamber is most likely gonna be a modified refrigerator. It could be a basement, it could be a cellar, but you really wanna be able to control your temperature and your humidity. In this chamber, I've got a dehumidifier from Evadry, that's the 1100 model, and then I've got a humidifier from Homec. But if you happen to have a larger chamber, like a full-size fridge, then Evadry also makes a larger unit, and Homec also makes a larger unit. But these two controllers, are what really control everything. This green one controls the temperature. Now it does have the feature of controlling heating as well as cooling, but in my case, I just have my refrigerator hooked up to it and I've got it set to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. It's currently 55.4 degrees Fahrenheit inside my chamber. This blue unit, and both of these are from Inkbird, controls the humidity. I've got the humidity set at 80%, and as the humidity fluctuates inside my chamber, this Inkbird controller is going to switch between the humidifier and the dehumidifier, keeping it as close to 80% as possible. You can see that right now it's 77.7. .7. I've got my humidifier and dehumidifier plugged directly into it, and I'm gonna let it do its thing until I lose 
35 to 40 percent weight loss. And normally that takes about two months based off of the size of this particular salami. So now it's time to go ahead and pull it out because it's ready. I've already weighed it and we're going to go ahead and cut it open and see what this particular salami looks like. Notice it's covered with that beneficial mold. If you don't put that mold on there, I can almost guarantee you that you're going to have greens and blues, possibly black and yellow mold that may or may not be safe to eat. So stick with the white mold and that way you know for sure it's a safe product. The closer you can keep your chamber to the parameters that you have it set, the better and more evenly your salami is gonna dry. So if you can keep your humidity pretty consistent and if you can keep your temperature regulated, you are gonna have a perfectly even dried salami just like this one. If your humidity is too low or if your temperature fluctuates too much, then you're more than likely gonna end up with something called dry ring. And then on a worst case, you can get something called case hardening, which means the outside dried too fast and the inside is relatively raw. But as you can see right here, we've got a very evenly dried product. It smells amazing. The texture looks and feels great. And now it's time to give it a little taste. That is so good. This is such a great recipe. It's balanced, it's flavorful. The flavor of the pork really comes through, but that fennel is just accenting it so beautifully. I hope you get a chance to make it. Hey, listen, if you got any questions, all right, I know sometimes salami making can be a little complicated. Be sure to leave them in the comment section below. If this is the first video you've seen from our channel, we want to say welcome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. We post new videos each week. We'll see you in the next one.